There are a lot of things that are very confusing about building a new bike. And today we're gonna to talk about handlebars. We're gonna pull in the reinforcements. We got Chip from What Bars and Fergus Tanaka from Richie Logic. They're gonna help spread some knowledge like fine molasses on a hot summer day all over our brains to educate us so that we're informed and know what decisions to make when we're looking for the next set of bars for our new build. Or old build. Or any build. Or your current build. Welcome guys. Chip, how did you start What Bars and what is What Bars? Okay, so What Bars is basically a database to help people compare handlebars. I built up my first bike and I was all excited and I want to drop bars and I thought this is the right way for me for this bike for my riding style. And when I got the bike built up, I was just like, you know what? It's not working for me. I started playing around with bars in Photoshop and kind of scaling them uh, to size and started overlaying them. I used a tool and I found some bars and it just put me into the perfect position and that was that. Was that so well, you used your own tool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. It seemed to work really good and I thought, hey, other people might want to use this too. So I used my little bit of web development knowledge to kind of throw this thing together and, and people loved it. Since I've added drops, people have been getting more and more excited about it. So. Cool. So it sounds just like a visual guide for people to help select bars that they are looking at. Exactly, yeah. And then does it have size and dimensions and like yeah, depth? It's got it's got all those dimensions and then I link to the manufacturer's sites. Very cool. I think what I like about it is, you know, just that kind of comparison. It's also gotta be funny too, because every every manufacturer seems to measure their bars differently, right? Yeah. Like if it's from the hoods or from the drops, do you see that discrepancy a lot? I definitely see that a lot. I see some I just was sent some the other day and they actually measure from the inside of the hoods, which I was that's the first time I had seen that. Yeah, lots, lots center to center. It seems like a lot of the independent guys are measuring the center to center of the outside of the drops. And then most larger manufacturers are measuring from the center of the hoods. Getting those tech specs have kind of helped refine the tool and it's just getting better every week as more guys sign on. One feature I'd like to add to this site is uh, to better compare drops is a front view and a side view. And that's something I'm working on right now. Then you can compare the flare, the drop, uh, and even the rise of all bars. So. I mean, just as a bike fit tool, I think it's um, it's very valuable. So it sounds like Chip is helping to standardize the industry for handlebars and just help calm the sanity of any consumer looking to get a pair of handlebars. Yeah. Shops have been the biggest response I've got, like saying, like, this is, this is a huge tool for our shop. It's something that you can do to completely change the way your bike feels and not completely change your bike, right? When you were first picking bars, how did you choose handlebars? What made you gravitate towards one or another? It was honestly just based on recommendations from people. It was just looking at what was popular on Instagram, basically, and saying, okay, like, this is kind of what everyone's leaning towards, so I'll start with that. How, how do you fund this? I have a PayPal me page for people who want to buy me a beer, but that's about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun project, right? It's labor yeah. of loves. I work a full-time job. I have two kids, and it's been really exciting to see how it's been able to help so many people. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, more than a few people see this and they go out and buy you beer. We got a couple questions here for both of you guys. I, I pulled the people and gathered some questions. Let's just start from the top. Are more hand positions always better? And I personally, even on a short commute, I find that I, I'm switching up my hand positions on a pretty regular basis. I, I personally think that more is, is better, you know, mm -hmm. especially on longer tours, longer rides, over 60, 80 miles, you know, and you start getting tired of being in the drops. One thing I did notice with a lot of those like kind of portour style bars, you know, where it kind of like swings back, it really locks your hands into one position. It's interesting how they're kind of being sold as a touring bar when really yeah. they're kind of more of like a towny option. Yeah. To answer the question, more never hurts. All right. Is wider better? Is narrower worse? How do you find the correct width for your body? I think you're going to have a personal preference and the bike will change up what your preference may be. I think that there's like diminishing returns depending on the type of bar and what you're doing. Like my background's mostly performance. So when I look at bike fit, when I was first getting into it, it was you base it off of your collarbone, how wide that is. But you come to find out that, you know, the wider the bar gets, your reach gets truncated. But if you narrow the bar, you know, it changes the reach of it. So there's actually been um, 
at least again for performance like road track that kind of thing going to a narrower bar for better bike fit so the body performs better based on that you also look at things like mountain and downhill and bars are so wide now for mountain you're getting like 800 880 and it's crazy because you're, you're basically like this it puts so much stress i think mm-hmm. on this front part of the body now that has to be taken up with other things like uh more travel and the fork and that kind of thing oh. i wouldn't put someone on a bike tour riding you know 40 classic drop bars for example you know i'd definitely mm-hmm. say widen it open up the chest a little bit but be be aware of what that would do to your position on the bike and then what, how does someone find the correct width for their body type? I think for, for me personally, it was kind of trial and error. You've got to get your hands dirty and try a few bikes out and feel it's comfortable for you. Compare and contrast the differences and see where, where it is comfortable and then scale up or down based on your comfort level. I'm a huge advocate of doing bike fits. So mm-hmm. I think if someone intends to spend any amount of time on their bike, um, bike fit really goes a long way. How do you know if the current bars that you have fit you or not that's a good question i have no idea if my bars yeah (laughs) to be honest i I don't think you know until you you don't know so start with a reference point and experiment from there yeah what are the different types of drop bars and what are their uses that's a very maybe we should not that could go into like 45 minutes of rambling (laughs) Um, you can throw all ultra romances new drop bars in there and they're no thank you (laughs) I mean, you know, if you want to go over really quick, the fundamentals are, you know, there's traditional, which is that little like semicircle looking thing. There's two types of anatomic. So there's anatomic that has like soft curve to it. And then there's like a, I call it a bio anatomic where you actually see that bone. Mm-hmm. And those seem to be the three major types of drop. Those are the ones you'll see the most. And that's all preference, in my opinion. I, mm-hmm. I can't, it's so anecdotal. Anyone that says like, oh, this is proven to feel better. Cool. It's just marketing jargon. Uh, does stiffness matter in bars? Stiffness isn't always better. You know, mm-hmm. the market will keep telling everyone you need stiff this and that, but stiffness only matters if you're pure performance. Again, like you, you look at track and they want the stiffest thing possible. That makes sense. They're an absolutely smooth mm-hmm. surface. They're going as fast as they can. But, you know, when you go off road, you want something, or even just riding around town, mm-hmm. you want something that has compliance, a little bit of give. If you get something that's nice and compliant, it actually goes a long way into improving the ride. It, it, carbon wasn't something that I would try to sell people on in the past because I thought, oh, it's bougie, uh, weight weenie, roadie stuff. But after riding carbon bars on my commute, I realized that it actually did a lot to, to absorb a lot of that noise. So, mm-hmm. oh, Cool. What does reach, drop, and flare do? Reach has to do with how far forward the bend goes from the stem. Mm -hmm. So that can occur with both uh, a flat bar or drop bar. Drop is how much distance from the bottom of the bar to where the hood is. You know, for so long, all the bars had these crazy like 170, 180 drops, you know, so you'd be really low on the bike. Because back in the day, that's what they thought, you know, as low as you can go. They didn't realize that the more that you like turn the body like this, less power you're getting out of it because you're kind of cutting off the core you know so now you have these really short and shallow drops so you're able to utilize the core more in pedaling and then flare kind of depends on forearm clearance when you're in the drop you know if it's so shallow uh you could hit your forearms on it but also um opening up the chest uh offering more hand positions because hand positions aren't just about your hands it's about what it's doing to your shoulders and your upper body so when you flare it out at the bottom like certain bars that we offer, you know, you have the hood that's kind of nice, traditional feeling. But when you get to the flare, it gives you a little bit more stability off road. So wise. <laughs> it's definitely the better technical answer. That was perfect. That was <laughs> sick. Thank you, guys. Right yeah, on. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Talk to you soon. Peace. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys. So hopefully that was informative. I feel like I learned a couple things on there. What Chip is doing is super cool for anybody that's into cycling. So big shout out to Fergus and Chip. Thank you guys for your time, and I I hope this was helpful. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.
station. I'm the transmitter. I'm the power. I'm the...